Today, we'll be looking at Tensor data set, which is one of the PyTorch utility functions that will help you and save you a ton of time if you want to train either machine learning or deep learning model using the PyTorch framework. This particular function is very important and it will save you a lot of time. So just make sure you take your time, go through this tutorial and understand every concept in this particular tutorial. The code and everything will be on my GitHub repo so you can leverage it and practice with it. To get started, the requirements are you need to install Torch and Pandas as well. So make sure you install these two libraries. I'm not going to take you through this one. I hope you can install the libraries on your own. And after installation, make sure you import Torch and also import Pandas as PD. More about Pandas later on in this tutorial. And also from Torch.utils.data, make sure you import data loader, Torch dataset, and the dataset. The dataset and the data loader, I will also uh, explain that to you. But our main focus is on Tensor dataset, which is um, the topic of this particular tutorial. So I'll run this cell and uh, I got a success mark here, which is imported correctly. So right after that, let's look at uh, something you need to know about the tensor dataset and how it works. So the tensor dataset takes in one or more tensors of the same length, guys. So make sure you understand it takes them of the same length and wrap them so that you can iterate through them in a structured way. And let's look at what it retains. So it retains both your features and your targets. So it pairs both the features and the targets together. And you know, when we are training models, often you need both the features and the targets together in order to calculate your errors and uh, back propagate them and so on so that's what this particular function helps you to do so we'll just look into that and one thing you also have to notice that is very compatible with the data loader function in PyTorch as well so it will automatically return to you your features and your targets okay so let's let's look at a sample example i have here which um it will help you guys to understand so first of all i have a pytorch tensor here which is of the shape three by two with their corresponding label so this particular row which one and two will give you an output of let's say zero three and four should give you one and five and six is zero so in case you don't understand this and you want a related example, just assume this right here is an image of a cat and this is the label cat. This right here is an image of a dog and this is the label dog. And this right here is also an image of a cat and this is the label cat. So you can take it that way. But in this case, we are just using numbers to simulate that. And these numbers have to be PyTorch tenses. Okay. So right after having both your features and your labels, let me run this particular cell. We can use the tensor data set class okay so when you use the tensor data set class all you need to give it is your features and your labels and then it's going to return to you a data set and this data set right here it will definitely be a generator so let's run this and then let's look at whatever is in this particular data set so i cannot type data set and let's run this and you can see it gives me talk.utils.dataset.com tensor data set at this particular memory location so what i can do because this is a generator what i can do is to type a uh, nest of iteration of the uh, data set so this should be data set and not train data set auto completion is weird so data set and this will give me the first batch of data so let's look at what it will give so you can see it gives me the first batch of data which is one two for the data we have here one two and the label should be zero so you can see this is the corresponding label so this is all the tensor data set is about it will take your data and then it will uh, put it in the right pairing for you and it will can give you the batches and their corresponding label so that's what it will do let's look at how you can pair this with the pytorch data loader so the pytorch data loader i've imported it right at the top here which is uh somewhere here and um i can now give it my data set which is of the tensor data set and specify a batch size of one that means anytime i run this i want one batch which will be something like this it's just like running nest of eta data set so anytime you run this you get one of these but you can specify a higher batch size of two three or more but this because my data is only uh three rows so i just want one at a time by an actual machine learning workflow you will not have a batch size of one it will be probably big 32 16 and so on based on your 
data set or based on the size of your data set. So yeah, I call this loader and this is data loader. I give you my data set from here and I want a batch size of one. So this also retains your generator and you can loop through it. So for your batch features and your batch labels in data loader, you can print them. So when we run this, you can see it gives us the batch feature one, two correlate to zero, three and four correlate to one and five and six correlate to zero. So you can see just as this so what it does is that it pairs these things for you and now you can use this in your um machine learning training uh, workflow so this is how it works and right after watching this i hope you understand but let me take you through an actual data set i have so that you can also get to know how it works in the actual data set and we will compare it to the python data set class as well so here I have a data set called rice classification.csv and I'm just reading this data set and checking the first two columns. So yeah, that's what I did. This already processed data set. It has about 12 columns, but we don't need the ID column here. So over here, I've just removed the ID column. Let me run this and make sure this works. And after removing the ID column, I check the data set again. You can see now we don't have the ID. We have from the area to the class. So all these here are my features and the class here is my label so i just have to divide them into s and y okay where x here holds my features and y here holds my labels so i'm dropping the class column and keeping all the values for the remaining columns into x and over here i'm also taking the class as my y my target variable and what i have to do in order to use the tensor data set is to first of all uh, convert whatever data I have into tensors. Okay, so in PyTorch, everything you work with should be in tensors. So what I have to do is to do torch.tensor and make sure I give it uh, the X. I do the same thing for my labels or targets as well. And the data type, I'm specifying float32. You can do float16 or you can even do double, which is the same as float64. So yeah, that's up to you based on whatever you are working on. But for now, let's just keep the flow 32. So that is it. So right after converting this to PyTorch tensor, then I can feed this into my tensor data set. Okay, I can give it a train and the Y train, which are my targets. Okay, and after giving this uh, my X train and Y train, I can send this into my data loader or I can still get some sample of data from this train data. So I can still write my nest of ETA and I'll give it this train data and this will re retain a batch of data so a single batch of data so you can see we have here our features and this is the label which is one and we are having a lot of numbers here because in our data set we have about 10 different uh, features or 10 different columns so these are the 10 different columns and this is the uh, corresponding uh, label which is also known as our class right here so you can see it works with our data set as well and this is going to save you a lot of time rather than rewriting your own custom data class and uh, processing it which will take a lot of time for you so in a situation where you need less customization you just want to go straight forward and train your data then i suggest you to use the tensor data set in pytorch okay and i told you this is compatible with the data loader as we've seen earlier so we can have a train loader and over here we can write our data loader and give it our train data and we can specify our batch size to be four which will give us four uh, samples at a time so it will give us four different features with their corresponding labels anytime we run it you can specify shuffle is equal to true and it will just give you random data it's not going to give you the data in a sequential way so yeah that's for this and you can see it runs as well and this whole thing we have done is the same as this which if you want to write your own custom uh data pipeline using the pytorch data set so the data set also will take your data your features and your label and you have to convert them to pytorch tensors then you need two functions the length function and the get item function so the length function will help you to get a length of your features and also the get item will help you to get an item or a sample of your data at a particular index so rather than doing this if your data needs less customization then i prefer you use the touch data set a tensor data set instead of rewriting all of this so what we did at the top here is equivalent to this class we've written and uh, with this class, this is how you can also use it with the data loader. So it's quite the same thing, but 
uh, I prefer this one if you need less customization. It's very fast. Right after converting your data, you just send it to the Tensor data set. And most of the things are implemented for you already. So you just go from here and uh, you can use it to train your model. All you need now is your training loop and so on. So let me know uh, what you think about this tutorial. If you have gotten any benefit, please just leave it in the comment section. Let me know about what you think about it. If you want more PyTorch tutorial as well, let me know and I will gladly do so. So um, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.